This is an accident that probably a lot of people know already, but I'm going to talk about it anyways. This is the story of TWA Flight 800, a regularly scheduled flight from New York JFK to Paris Charles de Gaulle before making a final stopover in Rome. However, on July the 17th, 1996, less than half an hour after takeoff, the plane would explode, breaking into pieces, and plunge into the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Long Island. How did this happen? I will go over the events that led up to this tragedy and what exactly the main cause was. Before we get into the main accident, we need to talk about the plane itself and the occupants on board that flight. The accident plane was registered as N93119 and was a Boeing 747-100 that was manufactured in July of 1971 making the plane 25 years old at the time of the crash. The flight crew consisted of 58-year-old Captain Ralph G. Kevorkian, who had flown for TWA for 31 years, 57-year-old Captain and Chair Airman Steve E. Sidner, who had flown for TWA for 32 years, 63-year-old Flight Engineer and Czech Airman Richard G. Campbell Jr., who had flown for TWA for 30 years, as well as 25-year-old flight engineer trainee Oliver Crick who had flown for TWA for just 26 days. There were also 212 passengers and 18 crew on board, including the pilots, totaling up to 230 people on board. The plane was scheduled for departure from JFK around 7pm, which would take them over the city and off the coast of Long Island towards Europe. However, the plane was delayed for just over one hour due to a passenger and baggage mismatch. The passenger was found to be on board the flight. At around 8.02pm, the plane began to push back, and by 8.14pm, it had departed towards Charles de Gaulle. Let's halt for a moment. You might recall me saying that this plane was built in 1971. This was one of the earliest 747s to roll off the production line, and thus, a lot of the wires and instruments inside had most likely not been checked for decades due to them being hidden within the hull of the aircraft. For the flight, the centre fuel tank did not have much fuel in it, only a little puddle for that matter. Over the fuel tank ran an electrical wire. Because of the old age of the plane, and also from wear and tear, this wire slowly began to decay over time, exposing the wire from its casing. This wire ran above the fuel tank. For some reason, this wire had a sudden surge of power during the flight. Once the electrical current reached the broken piece of wire, a small bit of the current reached the fuel inside of the centre wing fuel tank. Common jet fuel has a flash point of 38 degrees Celsius, which meant that the fuel would become flammable at this point. The wire then suffered a short circuit, igniting the fuel and making the fuel tank into a somewhat massive ticking time bomb that was invisible to everyone. Around 20 minutes into the flight, the first explosion occurred. The fuel in the centre tank had ignited, causing a massive explosion to rip the front of the plane off, including the cockpit and much of the first class section. The plane then actually ascended as a massive fire engulfed the plane before it plummeted back down to the ground. During this dive, there were two more explosions caused by the remaining fuel in the plane tearing off the wings and before long, the plane plunged into the Atlantic Ocean. I'm going to play the ATC transcript at the time during this event. I must warn you though, this is one of the most spine-chilling transcripts I've ever listened to. Did 
giving 900 to high contact for us from now on uh, 124.52. 1452, could have been 900. Thank you. Yeah. Well, sir, 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 I can confirm that out of my, uh, uh, my 9 o'clock position, we just had an good like an explosion out there about 5 miles away, 6 miles away. Could it be 800, sir? The plane's flaming debris landed on the water and lit up the dark ocean surface. The brutality of this crash killed everyone on board and subsequently became the second worst plane crash to occur in the United States at the time, just behind American Airlines Flight 191, which we will talk about in another video soon. During the crash, a HH-60 Pavehawk helicopter of the New York Air National Guard was flying nearby and was the first search and rescue operator on the scene. Within the coming days and weeks, much of the aircraft's wreckage was recovered from the ocean, over 95% to be exact. These pieces of wreckage were then transported to a hangar to be used for examination, which is the infamous picture you have most likely seen before. There are some other theories as to why the plane crashed, such as a bomb detonation or a missile impacting the plane, but no explosive shrapnel from a missile or bomb of any kind was found on the wreckage of the aircraft, nor was there any evidence of a missile being fired towards the direction of the plane, and no evidence of a bomb being on board. The investigators stuck with the most likely cause, which was a short circuit leading to an explosion of fuel inside the centre wing fuel tank. The aftermath of the crash subsequently led to the collapse of TWA just a few years later. They had been struggling financially for a while, and this crash was really the final nail in the coffin for the airline. The wreckage of the plane continued to stay up inside the hangar for almost 25 years, until it was announced that it would all be disposed and recycled by the end of 2021. Hello everyone! Thank you for watching this video. I am planning to open a Patreon soon, so give me suggestions as to what I should do on there. Either way, consider subscribing to the channel, as it does help with videos, and I'll see you on the next video.